Hey, what's up everyone? We are back here with the official Royal Revolt 2 Rate My Base Lucky winner here. Oh, Pelly. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. You have won and been featured for this week. And also next week we are having a big bloodbath. We are going to feature the number one player. So check the forums for more details. But here we'll take a look. As we do every single week here on these bases, we go in, no, uh, try and attack them with no scrolls, try and uh, you know, figure out what's good, what's bad in the bases, and give them a rating based on that uh, merit. We'll take a look here at the wave formation. A lot of R blasters, and for this setup, there's tons of you know, like choke points, connectivity. Everything is kind of connected together into like almost like an intestine design. So that's great for our blasters, great for gargoyles, great for frosters. So he has the proper wave setup for this style of base. Um, the only downside to this is that you can kind of get over here fairly easily. There's not too many things in the way, and it's just it's by design. You can't really have that many things because you can start double hitting things. So we should be able to get over here to this choke point to this side right here, fairly easy. If his towers leveled up a lot more, it probably would be a, a way better base here. The stronger the towers are, the stronger the uh, barricades and blockades are. It takes more time to get through, which allows bases like this to be way more effective. This is probably why it's only worth 91 medals. It's 3,400 trophies. We're with our main account here, and so we're roughly on 37 trophies. Uh, the low trophy or low medal count here means it's should be fairly easy for someone of my trophy rank, my attack strength, uh, based on the game qualities. As he levels up his towers more, this will become a more effective base. But overall, everything seems to be working pretty well. You can't really double hit any of the barricades. The only one you can is like right up here. And we'll just take a look here at how this works in real real time in action. For offense, we are going to bring knight or. Uh, Archers, excuse me, Frosters, and Cannons with Blade Storm, Sonic Blast, and the Heal Spell. Pretty much my standard go-to uh, attacking is Archers and Cannons. The reason I like Archers is they're really, really cheap. They just got a, a level upgrade to level 11. And Cannons are kind of just mandatory. They do tons of DPS, have huge amount of range. We're sticking Frosters in here because... Frosters help with all the connectivity that he has in his base. We'll be able to use our Frosters to slow down and negate a lot of his, his wave troops. When you are using cannons, and in a base especially like this that has a lot of choke points and a lot of ranged DPS, you have to be very, very careful about leaving your cannons unattended. Because they will get blown up. So we're going to go and use the Blade Storm right up there. Very, very nicely done here with the Fireball Tower right next to a Snake Tower. Again, as you level up the Snake Tower, that becomes more deadly. That Snake Tower probably was around level uh, 3 to 4. Maybe a little bit higher. Because it didn't do that much damage to my king. Again, a really really good corner right here you have a snake tower so if i come in here with my sonic blast like i did i'm going to take a lot of damage the only downside is that his snake towers aren't don't appear to be that high of level so once he levels those guys up the base will be way more effective a higher leveled snake tower can pretty much kill a king by itself if you sit there for a few seconds and you'll notice that even though Frosters have a low amount of HP, they do survive quite a bit because every time they attack, they slow down their opponents. And they also do AoE splash damage to them. The rate of fire is incredibly fast as well. And then when you use the Hero Scream, they even attack a little bit faster. Just like all the other units do. So Frosters, even though they may appear really, really weak, are actually a great offensive tool. And they also just look pretty freaking cool. So there you have it. Surprisingly, a little bit tougher than I anticipated. 
If we weren't careful, he almost killed us in the beginning. And then if his snake towers just were leveled up a little bit more, there could be a lot of chances for, you know, errors and raiding and dying. But overall, it is a, a good, good to great design right there. Again, as higher level towers, these designs become way more effective. We'll take a quick look and see if there's anything that I could recommend to help change. Again, this is all just, uh, you know, my opinions. No, overall, I think everything in there is really, really good. I would keep everything, you know, pretty much as is. And my only, my recommendation here to help make this base better is to definitely upgrade your Snake Towers ASAP. With those going up in levels, you will kill the Kings a lot more efficiently. But overall, great tower placement of almost everything in there. I, I really didn't see anything that stood out as, as being like... You know misplaced or in a, a poor placement so overall great job there and uh, congrats on winning again check out the forums next week there is going to be a special rate my base for the number one player in the world and you'll find out all the details on the forums there